Hi there, just uh, a little bit of information about the comet, uh, Panstar Comet, which was discovered uh, in 2011 actually in the Southern Hemisphere and which has been lighting up the skies down there since then. Well, it begins to be visible in our Northern Hemisphere starting from the 8th of March, so in just a couple of days from now. So if you're interested, look into the Western skies just after sunset It'll be very low on the horizon and you should see just a, f uh, a faint, possibly a faint light there. Of course, you need to be somewhere where there's no light pollution um, and also with a clear sky. Um, probably some binoculars would help. And then um, it's said to be setting around about 75 minutes after sunset. But as a matter of fact, in the days subsequent to that, it'll be rising higher in the sky and um, it'll be getting brighter. Some are saying at the moment that it, if you've got a clear night and no light pollution, that it's as uh, bright as a star in Orion's belt. So actually that is, uh, that, that's quite bright. Um, now on March the 10th, it reaches its perihelion. It, it passes closest to the sun. Uh, and, uh, but interestingly, this comet, this Pan-Stars comet will be con conjuncting uh, the moon in uh, Pisces and uh, Aries, uh, the new crescent moon in Pisces Aries on uh, March the 12th, 13th, but at the same time it's going to be very close, in fact I would say conjunct Mars and Uranus. Uh, so that's quite a potent mix. <laughs> um, it's very, very lively, uh, buzzy, uh, volatile, I would say, volatile energy, uh, particularly for late Pisces, early um, Aries, but also their opposites, late Virgo, early Libra, and also late, uh, um, uh, late Gemini, early Cancer, and uh, uh, late uh, Sagittarius, early uh, Capricorn. So yeah, some sort of a shake up, maybe some sort of just a change in the way the little things are set up. Uh, it tightens up uh, over the um, few hours uh, after uh, 7 p.m. Uh, if you were to look up there at 7 p.m., this is when all this is going on but it'll still be in orb with Mars for about 24 hours, less than 24 hours, but with Uranus up until the 19th of March. So there could be some kind of transition going on um, in individual lives, particularly with those with strong points linking to that degree and also the ones that I've mentioned. But in fact, it'll be all the signs in the late part, early part of all of the signs, maybe right up until 10 degrees. Um, going on into the next sign and uh, throughout March the comet will be uh, uh, visible in the northern hemisphere evening sky low in the west after sunset it will move northwards each evening uh, during March 2013 uh, as it moves from Pisces uh, into uh, into Aries but actually is in the more ancient constellations uh, of Pegasus and Andromeda um, and uh, at this time the comet m you might be able to see its tail because that's the thing about comets they have this bright dust trail which is usually uh, you know it can be blue it can be green um, and uh, that could be visible stop coming visible to the uh, to, to, to the naked eye without without binoculars uh, and uh, uh, it, sh as I say, it should be in in the vicinity of the waxing crescent moon, um, 12th, 13th, uh, there, and 14th as well. Won't be far away from that new beautiful uh, uh, crescent moon, Artemis's bow, it used to be called. Uh, and then, uh, for the uh, those of you who are interested in the stars, it comes very close to the star Algonib on March 17th and 18th, and then the star Alpharats on March the 25th, 26th. Um, uh, uh, my excuses, you know, apologies to the astronomers out there um, if I pronounce those uh, names wrong. Um, and in fact, uh, part of the sign of, <coughs> excuse me, 
uh, Pisces, late, uh, well, from, from middle of Pisces to early Aries, comes under the more ancient co constellation of Pegasus, the winged horse. Uh, you, you see that as a great star up there at the sky. And um, um, the star, uh, I mentioned Algonib, lies at the tip of the horse's outstretched wing and rules those born between March the 27th and April the 1st. And uh, then the other one, I've uh, just got some, uh, a note on that here, is um, Alpha Rats. And this is a blue-white star, and um, it, is, uh, it, it marks the chained princess's head because Andromeda was known as the chained princess. Uh, there's quite a, a mythology behind that, and uh, one of these days um, I'll share some of that uh, with you, what the ancient Greek uh, myths were connected to the uh, constellations. Uh, uh, early astrologers believed that Alpha Rats had great, gave great intelligence if you were born under that star, um, and it's those born between April the 2nd and the 9th, and a great love of freedom, also of wealth, uh, to those born under that star. So there's some information for you. Hope you find that interesting and I'll see you the next time.